everyone, my name is Nicole Ball, and today I'll be presenting my TED Talk for today, The Keystone to Success. Now, picture this. You're in your favorite restaurant about to order your favorite dish that you've been craving for the past month. Whether it be spaghetti, ramen, pizza, whatever it is, you've been really wanting that dish. And what if they're waiting for the dreaded responsibility of 20 minutes? The waiter finally comes with your food. But when you look at that dish, it's not what you expected. It's something else. It's a mistake. What do you do? Do you confront them? Do you hesitate to speak up? Do you be that sad person who just sadly eats your sad piece of dish that you didn't want? Well, for me personally, this is what I would do. I would be that really sad person that just sadly eats their food. Here's another situation. You're talking with your colleagues, classmates, or friends, and you really want to crack a joke or say something intriguing or relevant to your conversation. But in the back of your mind, you have that learning self-doubt. I don't want to say this, because what if they think this? Or what if they think I'm foolish for saying so? I'm sure these two situations are really relevant, especially as high schoolers. We often have lingering self-doubt and hesitation when we speak up. But today's set talk, I want to share three tips that I learned for communication. And I actually want to share a relevant story with you all. There was a freshman here I knew at Diamond Bar High School, and she was pretty much the definition of the quiet kid in class. She liked to keep her head down low, came to herself, and was pretty reserved. But one day, she had to do a group project, which is not uncommon in high school. And as her classmates started engaging conversations with her, she was just keeping her head down low and not looking at them, and just ignoring their existence as a whole because she didn't want to talk to anyone. But their classmates were pretty nice, and she tried, they tried to engage her into the conversation, but she didn't reply. And funnily enough, one of her classmates actually asked her, hey, do you happen to understand or speak English? Now, I really don't blame that person for asking her that, because if I was talking to someone, that would be something I would be wondering too. And why am I sharing this story with all of you guys? Because that freshman here I just showed you guys is actually me. Yes, the person who's in front of all you guys, speaking in front of 400 students, is actually that freshman who appeared to not know how to speak English. And anyways, back to my story. Fast forward to the summer, I had a lot of free time in my class. I had summer school, but I had a lot of time to suffer like over the past freshman year. And I noticed, and this memory actually lingered back in my mind, and I was like, hey, that was actually pretty rude of me to not acknowledge my classmates like that. But obviously it was too late to change anything. So I was like, hey, what can I do better this school year or sophomore year? And I was like, hey, maybe I should actually try talking to people this time. And I was actually binge watching YouTube videos on how to talk to people and even stumble across those stupid wiki how articles on YouTube or on Google on how to talk to people. And obviously talking to people and watching people talk to each other is much easier than doing it yourself. It's a huge, completely different thing. It's easier said than done. But after these couple of years, I actually learned a couple of things about strong communication skills and how it is so important to integrate your life for success. So back to my title of this TED Talk, The Keystone to Success. So first of all, what does Keystone even mean? Keystone, here's the Google definition. A special stone at the summit of an arc, locking the whole together. Wow, that sounds like a pretty important definition to me if it locks the whole thing together. But to those of you in biology class or bio honors, you may have heard of the term keystone species. According to the National Geographic definition, a keystone species helps define the entire ecosystem. Without a keystone species, the ecosystem would be dramatically different or cease to exist altogether. So this sounds like a pretty important word, and I love integrating this word with the word communication, because communication is really like a keystone species. Without communication, I can guarantee you every successful person that you meet, every entrepreneur, every CEO, they would not be where they are at without strong presentation or communication skills. So, speaking of bio biology, here at Diamond Bar High School, academic courses are very, very emphasized. Whether it be solving complex physics problems, knowing your history facts, or even knowing the formula for glucose for your bio class. Academics are so stressed here at Diamond Bar High School, hence all the AP and IB classes available to all of us. But in all of those seven classes that you take during high school, you always have this encounter of this teacher saying, hey, you guys have a presentation next week. What? We have a presentation? No way! I'm just here learning about all those math facts, bio facts. Why do I need to learn how to present? When we hear that we need to do a presentation during class, we have this slight moment of panic. But when the teacher says something differently, like, oh, you guys have a math exam next week, it's not as scary. Because for the math exam, you actually practice a lot, even, you did, even if you didn't study for it. You have all that classwork prep. 
all that teacher lecturing you, and you had all those homework practice. But for presentations, you never really had much exposure to it. You never had practice with it. Sure, talking to your friends is one thing. Presenting in front of the audience is a whole different entire story. And I actually, uh, the top presenters in the world is actually engineers. And this is kind of ironic because all you guys have the stereotype of engineering is being that quiet introvert person in class on the computer doing some goofy math skills or like they're insanely smart and they don't talk to anyone because they're so introvert. But to me, engineers are actually the top presenters in the world. And I actually decided to search up some stereotypes of engineers, some common misconceptions. And the number one thing, quite ironically, is they have no social skills. But I can actually quite disagree. Engineers, when they have a very innovative idea, such as these people, you may recognize some Bill Gates, Elon Musk, etc. They are very, they are all very successful people in those society. But how do they get to where they are now? Now, they didn't just come with an idea and then magically became rich. No. They have persuade a crowd of audiences, persuade, uh, persuade investors, convince people that their idea was worth listening to, worth buying for, worth investing to. And without good presentation skills, this would not be achieved. For example, if you had a trashy idea or a terrible idea, but you presented it as a very strong, very cool idea, you can easily sway your audience. But if you have a really innovative idea, but you present it poorly, you're not going to get as far as you would with a good presentation skill, which is leads to my number one tip, inform versus engage. Rather than informing your audience, engage them. Maybe crack a joke to make it more funny. And engaging your audience is really important because it makes people listen to you. And it can, it can cause ripples of inspiration around others. And this actually leads to my next topic, which is um, this internal filter that you have in your head. When you engage someone, you don't really more or less crack jokes, but when you crack jokes, you want to think about what you want to say because when you meet new people, you want to watch what you say. Hence the, hence the phrase, think before you speak. Before you send out emails to professors, your colleagues, you always make sure to reread that email five to ten times, right? You want to make sure you don't make any grammatical errors. This is kind of similar to your head. You always want to, you always have this internal filter in your head which leads to overthinking. And when you overthink, you attempt to shut down and break down and not say what you really want to say. And it really takes a toll on your communication skills. So I want you guys, when, next time when you speak, please, I'm not saying that you shouldn't think before you speak, but rather be more lenient on yourself with an internal filter in your head. And this is actually called the Pratfall Effect. The Pratfall Effect was discovered in 1966 by Elliot Aronson. And the Pratfall, the Pratfall Effect is basically when saying, when people meet you and you make more blunders or more mistakes, it actually makes you more socially attractive rather than being someone that seems perfectly responsible and capable all the time 24 7. When you meet someone that seems to be perfect, you, you think, wow, they're so good, maybe I shouldn't talk to them because I'm going to make a fool of myself. But rather, when you compare someone when they talk normally or when they make mistakes during their conversations, it makes them more socially attractive because suddenly they become more human or more relatable. My third story is these, you may recognize these as the supermarkets back in China. And I actually went to China last summer with my mother. And surprisingly, I found, I had like a little culture shock because here in America, when you go, let's say you want to go buy some bananas at a grocery store, whether it be Target or Walmart or anywhere, um, when you see that tag price on that, on that counter, you don't challenge the price, you know. You're like, oh, that banana is $3, okay, I'll pay $3. But no, at China, when my mom went there and she saw those prices, let's say like the van was like six dollars, she decided to talk to the store owner. It was like negotiating the price. She's like, "Hey, I think those bananas are kind of overpriced. How about we limit it down to three dollars?" And this is quite surprising to me because, again, here in America, we don't do that. But this actually was really interesting to me because my mother never met that store clerk or that store owner, but she was so she didn't hesitate to speak up or disagree. And this is my number three tip, decision-making. When you're with your friends and they make some decisions, whether good or bad, you always want to support them because that's what makes a good friend, right? You support them no matter what, no matter what they do. But that can actually be, really have a negative impact. When you always agree on something, it shows that you're not really thinking about what you're doing. And when you disagree, it actually shows that you're caring for one another. One of another. Because when you disagree, you actually think about what they're doing. And not afraid to speak up when they're doing something wrong. And disagreeing can actually lead to a lot of 
innovations, just like engineers, when they talk to other people and they disagree on their ideas, it can lead to more ideas in the future, which is why disagreeing is such an important tip. So to summarize the whole talk today, these are the three secrets that I have shared. Number one, inform or to engage. Number two, getting over your internal filter, aka the craft philosophy that I shared with you. And three, don't be afraid to disagree. Communication plays such a pivotal role in our lives. And social skills are often overlooked as a high schooler. Because as a high schooler, you're always delved into the books, into your studies, into your issue careers. You don't really have time to think about your social skills or presentation skills such as when you have presentations, presentations in your classes, you often feel like that's not needed because all you need to know are the facts. But actually, presenting ideas is very crucial for success, even as a student, not as an entrepreneur. And that's why communication is very important to integrate into your life. Thank you.